Hi, fourth grade. Welcome back. We are still talking about life in the West, and today we're going to be learning about the people who traveled West to live on the frontier. We know we'll be successful today when we can describe the life of immigrants, Native Americans, and African Americans in the West, and understand the life on the frontier, including the homes that were lived in, the work that was done, and how their school and work life worked in the West. We have a lot of vocabulary words today. We're going to start off with immigrants. These are people who move from another country to their native land, or from their native land. Um, the next word is discriminated. So we might have heard this word before, but it's a way to be treated unfairly. It could be because of race, religion, gender, or other factors that they could be discriminated against. Our next word is homesteads. These are pieces of land given to the government by settlers. And we have frontier. So this is an edge of a region that is mostly unsettled by people. We're gonna hear about frontier a lot because this is the land that was in the West, the unsettled land. Our next word is vigilantes. These are those who seek to punish a criminal without legal authority. So maybe by like cops or by um, law. So they want to punish the criminal um, without that legal authority. Our next word is to corral. This is a fenced area that holds horses, cattle, or other animals. To corral them together means to keep them together. And we have raw materials. These are natural substances that are made into useful uh, finished project products. For example, if trees were cut down and they were used and then turned into lumber to then be able to make buildings, the original raw material was that tree. And our last word are slates. These are tables, tablets made of thin blue gray rock that were used for writing. We didn't always have whiteboards or pencils and paper. So tablets are what used to be used um, that were made out of rock in school. Chapter two, a place for all people. Many formerly enslaved African Americans went west to find better lives. Immigrants from around the world journeyed there too. Some wanted to escape from wars in their countries. Others wanted to own land or practice their religion freely. As these new settlers traveled west, they met many Native Americans whose people had lived on the lands for centuries. And over here it says the Homestead Act allowed many former slaves to own land for the first time. This is an exciting time. And here it says African Americans were among the many pioneers who settled the west. Immigrants from across the world. After the Homestead Act was passed, many settlers arrived in the Great Plains. This is a huge grassy area stretching from Texas to Canada and the West. The U.S. government also advertised these areas to Europeans. The ads offered affordable farmland. This brought many Europeans to America. Many men from China also moved to the American West. They worked as miners and railroad builders. And, but some Americans discriminated against the Chinese because they did not understand their ways of living. So, meaning they might not have understood their culture, their, their language, those other kinds of things as to why they might not, uh, or the, why they might have dis been discriminated against. And here it says Chinese immigrants called California Gumsan, which means Gold Mountain. And as we learned about, they called them that probably because of the gold rush. Here, African Americans in 1865. The U.S. government passed the 13th Amendment of the Constitution. This amendment or law made slavery illegal. Once African Americans moved to the West, they became farmers, cowboys, cattle ranchers, or business owners. However, some African Americans in the West still face discrimination. And here, an African American family in front of their Kansas home. So right here in Kansas. So again, just because that at one point their skin color did make them um, slavery or slave a thing, at this time making slavery illegal was very new so they were still very discriminated against the exodusters a large group of african americans from the south moved to the west they became known as exodusters a man named benjamin pat singleton was their leader in the south unfair laws kept african americans from owning land and having the same rights as other americans singleton discovered that kansas was more open to african americans having their own land with his help, the Exodusters founded the African American community of Nicodemus, Kansas, in 1877. And here's a picture of Benjamin Papp Singleton. And down here, Exodusters gather on Main Street in Nicodemus, Kansas, which is located below. Communities of the West. Throughout the West, pioneers formed communities like Nicodemus. The communities might be towns, homesteads, or camps, depending on the type of work people did. Cattle towns formed around railroad stations. Cowboys herded cattle to these towns. There, the animals were sold to be used for meat and were put on trains headed to stockyards in the east. And here, this is a view of a stockyard in the cattle town of Abilene, Kansas in 1886. Hopefully some of these names are still familiar to you um, from living in Kansas of towns that we still have today. 
For homesteaders, the nearest neighbor might be several miles away. In order to feel a sense of community, homesteaders gather gathered with their neighbors for social events such as meetings or religious services. Some people settled into camp communities where they lived in tents and shacks. If the number of people in a camp increased, a town would grow up around it, which is why some of those towns that you're hearing we still have today. Up here, gold miners were called 49ers because of the gold rush that started in 1849 that we had learned about. And here, gold miners settled in camps around the mines. A clash of ideas. Long before European settlers and pioneers arrived, Native Americans lived in many different parts of the country. The European settlers wanted to own the land, but Native Americans did not understand the idea of owning land. To them, it was impossible to own land. It would be like owning the sky or the ocean. Land became a major issue between settlers and Native Americans, especially in the West. And here it says these chiefs are from the Pigeon Blackfoot tribe, which is based in Montana. So, whereas Native Americans didn't believe you could own land, Europeans thought you could own land, and so this became a problem. So, Native American communities. As more settlers arrived on the western frontier, the demand for land grew. The U.S. government forced the Native American people who were living there to move. The native people were sent to lands with poor soil that was difficult to farm. This caused them to become more dependent on the government for food and supplies. And here it says Native Americans were forced onto smaller and smaller areas of land. We have frontier laws and government. As people began crowding into the frontier, there were no law, rules or laws. With so many people from different backgrounds now living together, there were all kinds of disagreements. To bring order, officials were elected to settle disputes, govern towns, and make laws. With this came the need for courts to enforce the laws and for law officers to capture criminals and protect the public. Sometimes, citizen groups would take on the job of, of law enforcement. They were called vigilantes. So remember, there might not have been police or law there, but they were taking upon themselves to make sure that there was order and that things would happen um, to be able to make sure that citizen groups were enforcing the law. As towns grew, it became important to elect leaders and to pass laws that would keep people safe. I can't imagine a world without police or without laws. So it's very important that they did that to be able to establish um, law and order in their communities. Cowboys and cattle ranches. Cattle ranches were built on large pieces of land. The ranches included a home for the rancher, barns, corrals, so remember areas to keep the animals in, and stables. The ranchers hired cowboys to herd the cattle. Cowboys performed many other jobs on the ranch too, from preparing buildings and fences to milking cows and caring for the horses. The rodeo. Cowboys competed in contests to show off their skills in riding, roping, and bronco busting, meaning taming these wild horses. These contests became known as rodeos and they're still popular today. The roundup. In the spring and the fall, cowboys worked to bring in or round up cattle from the open range. During a roundup, cowboys face danger such as falling off a horse and being dragged across the ground. How would you like to do any of those things? I know I've been to a rodeo and I'm not going to be one that's going to be riding a horse or <laughs> anything else. Life on the Frontier, Chapter 3. When settlers arrived in the West, they had to learn new skills, such as how to build their own homes. With building homes and settling the land came long days filled with lots of work. All the members of a pioneer family had jobs to do. Despite the long and busy days, the pioneers found time for fun and entertainment. Here it says log cabins can be built with few tools and no nails were needed. So it would have been very important in these times. And here it says some pioneers lived in log cabins like this one located in North Dakota. Homes on the range. In the West, the types of houses that were built depended on the raw materials. So remember if they have trees available, whatever they have that could be available for them to build um, houses themselves that were available. Pioneers who settled near wooded areas cut down trees to build log cabins. On the wide open prairie, there were few trees. So settlers in these areas stacked regular chunks of earth and grass called sod to build homes called soddies. Soddies had dirt floors, few windows, and leaky roofs. And here was a sod house full of mugs. They were full of mugs, bugs, mice, worms, and even snakes. I don't know about you, but I would not want to be living in a sod house. I do not like any of those things. <laughs> And here you can see a picture. It says sod homes were warm in the winter, but cool in the summer. So it does do the job of keeping you protected. Um, but knowing me, I don't like those things. So I would not want to be living in a, a sod house. In the deserts of the Southwest, settlers built homes with brick made from adobe. Adobe is a mixture of clay and grass that is dried in the sun. Adobe homes stayed cool during the long, hot days in the desert. They were warm at night when the desert was cold. 
Today, many houses in the Southwest are still made from adobe. And this adobe house is located in Santa Fe, New Mexico. So you can see um, kind of that clayish texture. And settlers modeled their adobe homes after those of Native Americans of the Southwest. Native American homes. So we can see the different homes. So, so far we have log cabins, we have sod houses, we have homes made out of adobe. So now we're gonna see how the Native Americans homes were built. So great plain tribes such as the Dakota and the Blackfoot followed the bison herds. They hunted these animals for food and clothing. Since they were always on the move, these tribes built portable homes called teepees. The Omaha, also of the Great Plains, used soil, grass, and tree branches to build homes called earth lodges. Tribes in the Northwest built large wooden homes called longhouses. Many families lived together in a single longhouse. So we have a few different ways that they also, so they have teepees, they have lodges, and they have longhouses. So lots of different ways that you could build a home based off of your raw materials. Um, and here it says some of Earth Lodges house several families and their horses. Wow, those had to be pretty big. <laughs> Women's work. The settlers' days were filled with hard work. Women had many responsibilities, including raising children, cooking meals, storing food for the winter, gardening, hauling water, and doing laundry. Women also stitched clothing and quilts, made candles and soap, prepared medicines, and cared for the sick or injured. And here it says this frontier woman and her child are gathering buffalo chips. Um, to use as fuel for the family's fire. And here, buffalo chips are, are dried bison droppings. It's bison poop. So that's what they used because we didn't have a lot of trees in the area that were growing to use to be able to burn. So they would use those, that, those buffalo chips, as they call them. Okay, homework. Even children were expected to help their families with work. They milked cows, fed chickens, and gathered eggs and buffalo chips. Children also picked vegetables from their family garden. When boys were older and stronger, they helped their fathers chop wood and tend crops. Girls helped with cooking and caring for younger brothers and sisters. And here it says cows were milked twice each day, once in the morning and again in the afternoon. And that still would have to happen today for people that live on any kind of cattle farm. Education and entertainment. So maybe we're thinking, what did they do for fun? How did they go to school in these times? So school was held in a one-room schoolhouse. One teacher taught all of the grades. There were a few school supplies and books, and children wrote on slates, so remember those clay tablets, instead of paper. They studied reading, spelling, handwriting, math, and history. Maybe some of those you still hear that we use in school today. For fun, frontier families enjoyed playing cards and making music together. Sometimes neighbors would gather for dances or picnics. Children played games outdoors, swam, and made simple toys, such as dolls from dried corn husks. And here's a picture, um, this is an example of a one-room schoolhouse that shows students' desks and the heater that's in the center that provided warmth on their cold winter days. And school was closed during planting and harvesting time so children could help at home. All righty, that brings us to the end of our lesson today and you're gonna have two different journal questions. Our first one is describe the different housing that you may have found throughout the frontier. We saw lots of examples in the text of different housing that was used. And using examples from page 29, what work did the women do? So once you think back, make sure to look back in the text. And great job today, fourth grade. Can't wait to see you again soon.